we don't live in the box that somebody else puts us in. So we don't want to allow these outside forces and influences to dictate who we are and how we behave. If you're not conscious about your investment strategy, you won't end up where you want to be, not financially or as a human. On this show, we interview highly successful investors and share how they overcame limitations to become unstoppable forces of success. If you're ready to learn what it is to be a conscious investor so you can end up where you want, keep listening. Maybe you look at yourself in the mirror each day when you brush your teeth. Maybe you're putting your hair gel in. Maybe you're blow drying your hair and straightening it. Maybe you're shaving. I'm not sure. But I'm pretty certain, conscious investor, that you look at yourself in the mirror (laughs) at least once a day. I'd love for you to message me how many times you look at yourself in the mirror, maybe even in the rear view mirror with your sunglasses on. I want to talk with you today about who it is that you see when you look in the mirror. But before I do that, I have a huge, huge undertaking and I need your help, Conscious Investor. I believe in this movement so much, but this is something that is so grassroots and it is larger than me. It is not something that I can tackle on my own. And that's why I wanted to reach out and I wanted to ask for your support. Conscious Investor, if you are gaining and growing from the Conscious Investor podcast, will you please leave a rating and review and will you help spread the word? What do I mean by that? Well, I mean, a conscious investor, this is a movement, right? We want people to understand that there is more, far more to life than just chasing after dollars and cents, right? We want to live a life that flourishes from the inside out, a life of contribution, a life of meaning, of significance. And we believe that we can support people in doing that. And the conscious investor is something that so many people can can understand, raising our level of awareness and living life in a very conscientious way, a life that is full of personal freedom, not just financial freedom. If that message resonates with you, please take a moment and share this podcast with somebody in your life. That might be via text, email, on social platforms, however it is that you are most comfortable sharing. But please, this podcast is just going to sit and slowly grow unless people like you take a moment and share it with the world. So if you can help out, if this is serving you, please do. It'd mean the world to me. But let's go ahead and talk now about the man in the mirror. And I just want to talk about that real fast. I I literally thought, do I need to put like, parenthesis, W-O, parenthesis. So it's like, and then the word man, like, well, man, and kind of make this more like inclusive. And honestly, Conscious Investor, I have a classical background when it comes to literature and writing and such. And so I'm really not ever offended when people simply use the global term man to just emphasize that is for all humans, right? I I suppose I could have put the human in the mirror. But anyway, that was the thinking and the rationale behind that. Um, I'm not easily offended when it comes to pronouns and, and such. And so, hey, you know what? The man in the mirror, it is. And honestly, this even comes from a story from a gentleman that I was speaking with, a very young gentleman early in adulthood. I haven't shared a story for a while. And, and this story really, it's got me thinking. And I've shared it with a couple of friends since, but we were recently at our friend's um, bar- a barbecue to celebrate their son turning one. Now, conscious investor, if you go to a birthday party that is for a baby turning one year old, we're really not going for the baby, right? I mean, it's cute and stuff, but I told our friends, I'm like, we're really here just to like celebrate the fact that wow, you've kept a human alive. You've survived the first year of life with your second. So now you have more than one, right? I mean, that is something worth celebrating. And yes, we are there celebrating the birthday and everything of the child. But I really look at it as supporting our friends. Like, this is so great. You did it one year. Woo woo, Let's go. And as we were there, um, one of my friend's adult son comes to the to the barbecue and we're talking and it's been really cool having conversations you know i as um as kids grow and mature into young adults the conversations are so freaking awesome i just love them and in this conversation we were talking about his place of employment and he, he was lamenting it's like wow you know i've i've been there for a short period of time 
But in this short period of time, I have learned all of the different roles and responsibilities at hand that are within my reach and beyond my reach. I am like the best at, let's just say, I'm going to say like 70% of those compared to my colleagues who have been there longer than me. So he goes in for a performance review and he wasn't satisfied with the performance review. You're going to resonate with this conscious investor because he's like, yeah, my boss just said that I was average. (laughs) Conscious investor, I know, right? Average. I know we're all high performers and we want to be, you know, recognized as a high performance that we are. And when a high performer isn't recognized for, you know, taking initiative to learn, become skilled, proficient, and excellent at something, it can really kind of feel like a gut punch. And that's really what came about. And he asked the question of his manager that I would have asked as well. And and I, I'm so glad he did ask this. What would it take for me to be above average in your estimation? And the manager gave some feedback as to what that would take. Ultimately, the feedback really doesn't matter as we're talking about the man in the mirror. I thought the feedback was a little insignificant anyway. But um, all this to say, this young man says, that's fine. You know what? He rated me as average. I'm not going to be in this position for forever. So no harm, no foul. I'll be average. This guy is actually going to see what average looks like. You know, a little bit of that youthful, you know, retaliation coming out. And I, I looked at him and said, so you're going to let somebody else dictate who you are and how you behave, (laughs) kind of dishing it back out, you know, you got to do that. (laughs) And, and we ended up having this conversation about leading a life that is really the inside out life. Now, I am not going to even take owner or or, um, I can't say that I'm the person that came up with inside out life. I love that when we are engaged in literature, when we're engaged in our own personal growth, development and learning, we then discover other ways of communicating our ideas. So for example, you know, I love Brendan Burchard, Motivation Manifesto, High Performance Habits, um, The Charge, other works of his. You know, I love Ryan Holiday. I also love Michael Neal's book. He wrote Super Coach. He also wrote The Inside Out Revolution. And these books have really opened amongst I'm looking around all these other books, you know, they've given some words and some credence as to how to communicate these things. So when I say inside out life, it really does mean that. And I started communicating this with this young young man. And I have no doubt, conscious investor, that if you're not facing this temptation to let outside forces influence who you are, how you act and how you behave, if it's not happening today, you're going to face that temptation down the road at some point. It's part of being human. It's part of life. And so we have to really take ownership of our life and say, okay, sure, I could in this young man's um, you know, situation. Sure, you could go to work and you could do, quote, average work to kind of stick it to the boss and show him what average really looks like. I mean, you're still going to do all the work and get it done and all of that. But how does that feel when we look in the mirror? When you are looking in that mirror, are you going to be proud of that person? And that's really what this comes down to. And we ended up having this conversation, or maybe it was just me talking (laughs) and saying, you know, we're not working for the boss in any position that we're in. We're not working for somebody else. We're working because that's who we are. Whatever it is, whatever that output is, is a reflection of whatever is inside of us. So if I slack off and I say, well, screw that. I'm just going to give average work because you say I'm average. I will be average. What's within us then is some vindictiveness, some spitefulness, perhaps, right? And is that who we want to be? Is that a character trait that we want to highlight, to amplify? Is that what we want to be known for in the world? When we look in the mirror, we want to be able to say, I like you. I love you. I've said this on episodes for for the last couple of years. The person we spend the single most time with in the entire world is ourselves. 
we have to look at ourselves in the mirror. We have to be able to say, dang, you kicked butt today. I'm proud of you. That boss doesn't understand it, but we did this. We showed up and we have honor. We have class. We have dignity and so on and so forth with going through virtues and character. You see, we're not out there doing our work just to check the list for somebody else, for the outside people. We are there because we are trading. We're trading. Okay, I'm trading in this case, time time for money, right? For this gentleman. Either way, it's a trade. How do I want to be known for as the trades that I make and the transactions that I do? What's the reputation I want to have? Because whatever I am doing now in this smaller space of life is going to be amplified and exaggerated in other parts of life. Let's just look ahead to the future. If this is our response, well, that's what that person says about me. Therefore, I will be that person. What does that look like in a boardroom? Right? I'm not a person because somebody else told me I'm a person. In Conscious Investor, we don't live in the box that somebody else puts us in. We get to design our life. We are the architects of our life. So we don't want to allow these outside forces and influences to dictate who we are and how we behave. Who we are and how we behave and how we engage life and circumstances, that all stems from whatever is within us flowing and flourishing out. If we want a vibrant life of powerful contribution, if we want to contribute in this world and make it cast a a positive influence and effect in the world, then we do have to pluck and pull these parts out of us. Or we can just simply, another way, if if that feels heavy, just let it pass through. Recognize it for what it is. Wow, I feel a little resentful that this person would say this about me. And conscious investor, I can definitely relate. <laughs> I've experienced that in my own in my own life, which is probably why I can recognize. Let it pass through. Just let it move on. I see it. I recognize I feel this way. I don't have to shun these feelings, but I will not take action on these feelings because I like the person in the mirror. And I choose that person and I stand behind that man, that woman in the mirror. That's who I stand behind. Because I believe God created that person to do something super powerful in this world. And powerful things that are good contributions to wor- to the world come through good character, strong virtue. So conscious investor, what do you see when you look at in the mirror? When you look, when you look at, sorry, let me finish that sentence, right? But when you look in the mirror, who is it that you see? Have you actually looked yourself in the eyes recently? Have you actually said, how are you? I like you. Are you okay? (laughs) And it sounds so goofy. When we say that, it sounds, you know, pretty goofy. Like, you're kidding me, Julie, you want me to look in the mirror at myself and actually ask myself these questions? (gasps) Uh, Yeah, for real. Try this on for size because we really are a person. And a lot of times we're so absorbed and consumed with just being in our body and carrying, uh, going through the motions of life, right? And carrying this body around through life that we actually forget to step back and say, wait, 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 let me kind of do an outside the body experience and actually do a check-in. How would I treat this person if I were the friend? You see, if we want to live that powerful inside out life, that life that God created us to be hardwired. We are uniquely hardwired with a very special capacity to do something in this world. Then we got to stay in tune with who that person is. I'd love to know where this landed for you, Conscious Investor. Drop a comment down below. The comment will let me know your feedback. And remember, you can leave the feedback that you feel needs to be left. That might not be something that's going to make me be like, oh, yay. You know, like that's okay. Honesty is always the precipice of growth and opportunity. So don't hesitate. Leave some honest feedback there. And remember, I'm not just a voice over here. So if we haven't had a conversation, what is stopping you? 
go down to the show notes, schedule time for you and I to have a, a discussion. We could talk about investing. We could talk about the goals and plans you have for your life. I'm excited to get to know you. Genuinely excited. You can go and look at the comments and you can see like, yeah, Julie actually really, truly stands by those words. People feel it when they make those, when we have those conversations. So conscious investor, as you are going about your week, please remember, stop, pause, look in the mirror at that person and say, hey, how are you doing? The outside influences are always there. Don't let them dictate who you are because you are in control of your life and who you are and how you show up in the world. Until next time, live big, love bigger, and do great things. What's the big deal about investing in apartments? Why is it better than investing in a slew of single family homes? I've compiled a lot of information on why investing in a multifamily, also known as apartments, will help you reach your investment goals. Head over to threekeysinvestments.com and download the Why Invest in Multifamily Guide today.